Hello everybody, Calamity here in Sound Hill 2 Remake is amazing. Today's video is going to be all about Zillanen. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but the brand new 5 star character that you can currently pull for in Genshin Impact's brand new 5.1 update. I told you I was going to take a look at her kit in more detail when she's released, and well, now that time has come. So let's actually go to her character trial and take a look sees at her kit, because I actually want to do see the numbers, because I keep hearing... All these other content creators say, oh my god, she's so broken, she's going to be the new meta. And, well, let's actually see if there's any merit to those statements. So, we already kind of know her kit, because if we, we watched the uh, live stream where they talked about it, so we already know that uh, she has a basic normal attack talent, there's nothing fancy about it. Although, being a netlane can uh, can Canada <laughs> character, can't talk. Uh, she does have the Night Soul Blessing stuff. This is when she does her kicks with her rollerblades um when she's in this state uh they'll do damage based off of her defense i don't know how strong these are like we can see the multipliers here so it could be some decent damage but definitely not the main source of her usefulness holy and shit you gotta work on your skill descriptions holy that's a lot all right let's uh let's break it down so let the rhythms of passion Resound throughout the land. Jillinen switches to high-speed combat blading gear and rushes forward a certain distance before dealing Night Soul line geo damage based on her defense. After using this, Zillinen will gain 45 Night Soul points and enter the Night Soul's blessing state. In this state, she will shift to her blade roller mode. So if you want her blade roller to do damage, now we understand that you'll want to upgrade her normal attack. That's if you want her herself to do damage, but that might not be that important. Uh, let's take a look-see at some more stuff. So, source samples. Zillanen has three source samplers with her that can generate different soundscapes based on her other party members' elemental types, decreasing nearby opponents' corresponding elemental resistance while active. The initial re recorded source sample within each sampler will be Geo. And then for each party member who is Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro, one Geo sample will change to that uh, corresponding element. Okay, that makes sense. While Zone Nen is in the Night Soul's Blessing State, the Geo Source sample she carries will always be active. After unlocking the passive talent, ne oh boy, the Neto Echoes, I don't know how to say that word, sorry. Zone Nen can trigger a, a said passive talent's effects to regenerate night soul points for herself when her night soul points hit the maximum she'll consume all of her points and activate the three source samples she has on hand for 15 seconds when the source samples are active nearby opponents corresponding elemental resistance will decrease source sample effects of the same elemental type cannot stack that's an important sentence right there zillanin can trigger these effects even when she's off field Let's take a look. So the, there's the damage, that rush damage she does, which is about almost 300% of her defense at level 8. Elemental res decrease. 30% is the base. That's pretty good. I, don't, I have no idea if this increases on level. Um, it could just be the damage. Source sample activation durations. When you activate them, that, that's how much de uh, resistance they lose. For 15 seconds and then the night soul point limit is nine and then or sorry excuse me the night soul point time limit is nine and then the night soul point limit is 90. cool down to seven seconds so that's pretty good 30 percent and again it doesn't stack so you only need one character of the element that you want to reduce the resistance of so it doesn't matter who like if you pair her up with mulani congrats there's your 30 percent resistance shred if you pair her up with arlecchino there's your 30% pyro resistance shred. And then she's already Geo, so you already have the Geo shred as well. So that's going to help her own damage. But obviously, if you're using Navia, she already is on the banner as well. Um, or any other Geo character of your choice. Noelle, uh, for any of the four star fans out there. Um, she's also going to be getting a huge benefit from these characters. 30% shred is huge. This is something that animal teams have been taking advantage of since the dawn of time because of the very disadvantage set. So now Geo um, now has their own resistance shred. I believe Dendro also has their own resistance shred uh, thanks to an artifact set piece as well. So Geo getting a character for it, which is kind of nice. Let's take a look at her burst, which not as long as the skill, thankfully, but let's take a look. 
So she's going to activate the Fulgiston Stereo DJ Controller Portable at full power, dealing Night Soul aligned AoE Geo damage based off her defense. Additionally, she will trigger the falling effects based on her different source samples. If she has at least two source samples that have had their elemental types change, Zillanin will play an eb ebullient rhythm, healing nearby active characters at intervals based on her defense. Now we're going to look at that scaling in just a sec. And then if she has fewer than two source... If she has fewer than two source samples that have had their elemental types change, Zillanin will start up an ardent rhythm, which will play two additional beats that deal Night Soul Line AoE de Geo damage based on her defense. If you're doing an all geo, this is something I complained about at first. Um, so if you have different elements in your team, at least two, then her burst becomes a heal. And it'll still do some damage. But if you have a geo team, then her burst becomes additional geo damage. AoE damage. And it's all based off her defense. We can see here, the skill damage does quite a bit, 450% at level 8. Continuous healing is 166.4% of her defense plus 939. So, can we actually look at her defense right now? So she, this trial, Zillanin, which can be higher, has 27, 67 defense. And if we look at that healing, excuse me, it's uh, 166.4. So we're going to do some quick math. All right, after doing some quick math, she heals about 5,500 HP per interval. And honestly, that's good enough. That's pretty good as a healer. So you might not even need to bring, well, a healer, depending on what your team is, um, if since Zhilinen can cover that aspect for you. So you might just need to bring just a shielder and you'll be fine. Really, really nice burst here, depending on what team you have, if, if you're using her for the healing. If, if you're using for the damage, it also looks pretty good as well. Definitely going to be useful and she'll contribute something. Of course, we'll definitely see the numbers when we actually try her. Um, and then we see that the ebullient rhythm duration is 12 seconds, so that's 12 seconds of healing. Follow-up beat damage is still the same as the initial, so I guess just to showcase that. And it only costs 60 energy with a cooldown of 15, so that's Really, really good. Focus on defense. Focus on a little bit of energy recharge, but she doesn't need that much. She is absolutely chilling. All right, let's take a look at her passive. So we have the Echoes one. While in Night Soul's Blessing State, if Zillanin has at least two source samples that have had their elemental types changed, change, she will gain 35 Night Soul points with her normal or plunging attacks when they hit opponents, and this can be triggered every 0.1 seconds. So if you're using her as a bit of like on-field or damage for a bit a good way to get some free points to activate those samplers makes sense and then if Zillanin has fewer than two source samples that have had their elemental type change her normal and plunging attacks deal 30 percent increased damage it's almost like she can sort of be a main dps almost i don't know how good that is though the normal and um although i don't know how often you're gonna be plunging attacking with her unless you have a cloud retainer which would be a weird combo Anyways, let's move on to the next one. So portable armored sheath. While in the Night Soul's blessing state, that means her roller blades are out. When Zillanin's Night Soul points reach the maximum, she will trigger an effect equal to that of her Night Soul burst. This effect can be triggered once every 14 seconds. Uh, additionally, when nearby party members trigger a Night Soul burst, Zillanin's defense is increased by 20% for 15 seconds. So definitely want to use her with Natland characters. I don't like that in particular because that's a, a party limit thing. So you are missing a good chunk of defense that she could have for, again, more um, damage for her, more healing. Um, but at the cost of you have to put her with a Natland character with the night. Well, that's any Natland character, right? With a Night Soul Burst. So little oof, but it's also good, you know, if you've been pulling on the banners lately so she can get her roller blades more often basically so next up is wow we why is it so long oh my god okay night realms gift blessing of forge fire after her night soul points are fully depleted zillanin will switch to consuming phlogiston to maintain her night soul's blessing while in an area with phlogiston mechanics within that land she can use night soul transmission zillanin the active character is currently sprinting climbing in a movement mode caused by terrain or certain talents excuse me or at a certain height in the air the falling will trigger when switching to zillanin she will enter night soul's blessing state and gain 20 night soul points in this situation zillanin's night soul points will have a four second time limit after which her night soul points 
will immediately expire after she uses Yo Hual's Scratch within this time limit. That's her skill. Her Night Soul point time limit will be extended by nine, 9 seconds. Night Soul transmission can be triggered once every 10 seconds by your own team. Additionally, while in Natlan, Zillanen will not consume stamina while climbing while in the Night Soul's Blessing state. Basically, this whole essay of an ability is she makes exploring Natlan that much easier for you. But only Natlan. She's not going to make any other area easier for you. Unfortunately, like right now, that's going to sound good on paper because, you know, it's the new area. This is where everybody's exploring and stuff. But, you know, once we're out of here by next year, she's going to feel a lot less useful, at least for exploration. For combat, I highly doubt we're going to get another resistance shredder, at least for her, like, that does what she does already. So she's a really good character, just on paper. And then the last... Finally, a short skill description. Her last talent is Tour of the Tepil Tepil Kutul. Sorry. Triggering Night Soul Transmission restores 15 flow just in. So she gets a little bit of that fuel um, when you do Night Soul stuff. So she basically keeps you on the go without you having to stop and find a, a flow just in station when you run out or having to, you know refill the bar she just keeps you going which is really nice again making exploration easier for you so talent wise a really really strong character on paper we're gonna try her out in just a sec i know some of you guys were like hurry up and play the character but let me just look around more and see what she has so here's her signature weapon it is a sword and not a claymore so characters like albedo or chiori you know defense scaling sword characters can take advantage of this so there might be a new best in slot let's take a look she gains the ode to flowers after normal or plunging attacks hit an opponent her defense increases by eight percent and she'll gain a ten percent to all damage bonus for six seconds max two stacks so 16 percent increase in defense 20 percent all elemental damage bonus this can trigger once uh per sec uh point one second when this effect reaches two stacks or the second stack's duration is refreshed. Increase all nearby party members' elemental damage bonus by 8% for every 1,000 defense the equipping character has, up to a maximum of 25.6% for 15 seconds. That's a lot of yapping I just did. So not only does this sword increase her own damage potential, healing potential, and all that stuff, she also gives a buff to her team uh, depending on her defense. And because she's at... 2700 she could easily reach 3000 she's not level 90 and we don't know what her artifacts look like 3k isn't a crazy stretch not to mention there's also other ways of obtaining extra defense so she with this weapon she'll be giving not to mention this weapon's not even level 90 either she'll be giving a 24 percent all damage bonus to everyone on top of a 30 percent elemental resistance shred from her skill. This character is insane. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you are someone that's struggling damage wise, she is going to elevate your damage just the same way that Kazuha does it. The only difference is that Kazuha is great for grouping up enemies, um, whereas she just does a bunch of AoE damage and healing herself. She can also be a healer, right? Um, as we saw in her burst, if depending on what team you're using her in. So she is a fantastic character. Highly, highly recommend everyone pull for her if you have the gems to do so or you're a whale but you're gonna buy her anyways um she's really really strong um and if you're struggling on theater she obviously it's it's uh electro geo and pyro this iteration so she's gonna be really good if you want to have another solid character for imagining theater and of course spiral abyss as well wow this weapon is really good though and I would also consider this for Albedo as well. This would be a, this is a really solid weapon here. And then yeah, we saw artifacts real fast. She does have the um, she gives even more buffs to her team, right? So when whenever you do a reaction, you get the elemental damage bonus. Like this is the same set that uh, Kachina also uses. So very very good character here. A lot of positives here and great mobility for Natlan. So if you're getting annoyed exploring Natlan. She's gonna make it a lot easier in a like it's also especially if you pulled other Natlan characters like Mulani, 
uh, Kinich as well. So lots and lots of mobility in that land to make exploration a breeze. But now let's actually try the character out. Sorry. So they want us to there we go. use her skill, that's the rollerblades. Wanna fight enemies and collect the orbs. Whoops. Her personal damage is not that bad. It's good for exploration, but definitely Hard to take advantage of, of just her. Maybe if you use like an all Geo team that buffs her defenses even more. Um, don't forget Goro could also be an option to be used with her if you're going for a Geo team because he increases. Why am I climbing like a weirdo? Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Um, you want to use Goro with her if you're doing a Geo team? he increases defense and there we go and do this Let's go ahead and that is there like an AoE indicator to show that the enemies have had their resistances shred? Because we have this thing on the floor. I guess that... Hmm. Oh wait, what am I doing again? <laughs> Sorry. Habit. There we go. You can see the sampler is on the left. So we have two pyro, one hydro. That's why there's one blue triangle and two red. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty... Like, the text, just like a lot of other Genshin characters, very lengthy. But she's not a complicated play or anything. Oh, one more. So you can use her as an off field debuffer if you want. Okay. I ran away, sorry. I didn't know they were gonna respawn so fast. Anyways, um, I kind of wish they would have also let you use her in a Geo-only team just to see how she performs. Um, cause she's- it looks like she's more of a damage dealer herself, uh, when it comes to a Geo-only team, but I guess that's something people that will pull for her can, uh, figure out for us, but she seems- Again, really, really strong. Don't sleep on resistance shred. That's all I'm going to say. It's a really, really strong debuff and a great way of getting more damage out of all of your characters. And not to mention, again, if you go to her skill, she does work with cryo. It's not she wasn't used with one in this trial, but it is stated here. She's good with electro, cryo, hydro and pyro. So if you have any character that you feel like could use a damage boost, which is a lot of those cryo characters. Zillonin, I don't know how to say her name properly yet, I'm sorry, is going to be that character that's going to help elevate them just in the same way that Kazuha elevated so many characters with his ultimate, uh, excuse me, his burst and his skill because of the resistance shred as well as an elemental boost. So both of these characters essentially do the same thing of making the rest of your team do a lot bigger numbers, and that's a really nice thing to have. Uh, for anybody's account. As long as you have the right DPS to use with her, I recommend the pull. Uh, and as well as if you have the gems to pull for her as well. Some of you might be broke after Mulani and Kinich, I'm not sure. But yeah, but if you're someone that's just fine with what you have, you're happy with your DPS, you don't really feel like you need even more. Um, say for example, you're using a Dendro team and you're doing Hyper Bloom or Burgeon um, or Aggravate and stuff like that, then obviously she's not going to really 
do too much for Hyper Bloom teams and stuff like that. She might be a little helpful for uh, Aggravate, actually, because she does help shred Electro Resistance. So there is something um, that you can do there. And remember, it doesn't stack. So you only need one element of the one you want to Elemental Resist. And you get Geo for free already because of her element. So if I were to be a tier list person, not that I am anymore, but if I were to put on a tier list just on initial first impressions, keep that in mind, I would definitely put her in S tier or high A. Resistance Shred is crazy good, and there's a reason why Kazuha is considered one of the best units in the game still years after his release. So when we have a character like that, that works with so many people, huge versatility, very, very strong character to have. And before I repeat myself some more, I'm just going to go ahead and dip out and say thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful in helping you decide whether or not she's worth the pull. I'll try to make some more videos out in the future um, for more 5.1 stuff on other characters like the 4 stars and the 5 stars and the talk about the banners and stuff. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.